Hi guys. So today we're going to talk about angle pairs and parallel lines. Okay. So just like yesterday, we're going to start off with our transversal. Okay. So remember, transversal is a line that goes to the two lines, correct? The only difference now is that the two lines that it goes through are parallel. Okay. So if we call this line L and line M, a couple of ways that they show lines are parallel is one, they're going to tell you. So for example, they can say, uh, they can say line L is parallel to line M. Okay, that's one way. These, another way they can tell you, which you will see a lot of the time, is they use the symbol for parallel. Okay, so symbol for parallel, just how we had a symbol for perpendicular, the symbol for parallel is kind of like in, in, in sideways 11 or slanted 11. Okay, and so the best way or the quickest way to show that these two lines are parallel is you put the line L parallel symbol and then M. So that reads line L is parallel to line M. A third way, and I don't know how well I'm going to show this, a third way that they show lines are parallel is using like a little arrow or a little triangle, solid arrow, whatever you want to call it, okay, or something like this, okay. And that's going to be on the lines themselves, okay. So I'm not talking about the, the edges or the, the tip of the line, okay, that, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is they're going to have an extra line here, or somewhere on the line, right? So this line right here that's showing you that L and M are parallel. So anytime we see that, we're gonna assume or, or we should automatically automatically know that they are gonna be parallel, okay? The other symbol is the solid, um, this solid triangle or the solid arrow. And once again, that's showing us that they these two are parallel, okay? So we get a couple of things. Um, we still have what we call our interior right so interior is between the two lines and then we also have what we call our exterior and our exterior and exterior is everything that's not inside right everything that's not between the two lines and remember so, so we still have our left side of the transversal right side of our transversal so we still have alternate interior consecutive etc etc the only difference now is if I was to take this angle here, let's just say it measures 120 degrees, right? If I can somehow remove this angle, right, and move it down there, then because, because I know that these two lines right here have the same slope, or they, ha they have the exact same, um, they have the same exact, it's the same exact slope, then they're gonna have the same exact angle measure, right? And so we have new properties, not new angle pairs, but new properties to the angle pairs, right? And so one thing that I would not recommend, but I would say that once you know you have parallel lines, okay? Once you know you have parallel lines and you know that corresponding angles are congruent, right? symbol for congruence congruence then we can pretty much find what all of these are going to be in case you don't remember them okay so one thing we do have to know is vertical angles are always remember we talked about this always 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 no matter what always are going to be congruence and then we should know what linear pairing angles are they are supplementary or they add up to 180 degrees right so i'll put supplementary yeah. and so here's what I mean by if you know corresponding angles of parallel lines are congruent then you can find everything else because if I know that that's 65 this angle here is also 65 because it's a vertical angle right and so a chorus bonding angle to this would be right there, correct? And so I would also know that this angle is also 65 for the reason that it is um, it is corresponding, right? 
And so with that being said, I can do one of two things. I can say, well, this one can also be 65 for one of two reasons. It can be vertical to that, right? Or it could be corresponding to that, right? And so we kind of start seeing a pattern here, right? Now, let's just finish this problem before we talk about these over here, okay? So if I were to finish this, right, that's a linear pair. It adds up to 180 degrees, right? And so to figure out what this angle measurement is, we simply do 180 minus 65, okay? If we forgot how to subtract, here's a quick reminder, right? So we get an angle measurement of 115. Well, let me, let me try to color code this for you guys. So 115. And we kind of approach it the same way, right? So if that's 115, that's 115 for a couple of reasons. It's either the vertical angle or it's a linear pair. And that's going to be 115 for the same two reasons. And that's going to be 115, right? And so now if we go back, we can kind of see how some of these angles match up, right? And so what I mean by that is, for example, alternate interior, okay? So alternate interior, what do you notice about the two alternate interiors, right? So alternate means one comes from the left, one comes from the right. Interior means they both come from the inside, right? Between the two lines. So I'll say interior, interior. And so what do we notice about these two? They are congruent. What do we know about these two? They're also congruent. And so we can say alternate interior angles are congruent, okay? And same thing for alternate exterior, right? So this one is gonna match with that one. And this blue one's gonna match with that one, okay? And once again, what do you notice between both of them? They are both congruent. Now let's quickly talk about consecutive interior angles. Remember, consecutive is should, it's another way of saying same side interior, right? So same side interior is talking about these two, right? So same side, both on the right or both on the left. And they are not congruent, but what you do notice is that if you were to add them together, they are supplementary or they add up to 180, right? 180, we'll say supplementary all right and one thing i want to point out is that this chart right here okay this chart right here is only true whenever you talk about angle pairs and the lines are parallel okay this is only true if the lines are parallel okay one more time this is only true if your lines are parallel right so if the lines are not parallel, then we still have corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, consecutive interior. The only thing is that these rules, this congruence and, and supplementary angles, uh, supplementary don't apply, right? We can still identify all of these angles. The only difference is these do not apply if the lines are not parallel, okay? So now, some applications, right? So here's how we can possibly, and again, we can do this with algebra as well, um, but here's how we can apply this, right? So first things first, notice how we have our parallel, sorry, parallel line symbols there, correct? That's telling me that, that all of these apply here, right? And so, right off the bat we can actually start with this now you have to be careful because if you notice we have uh, we'll call this l we have one we'll call this m that's two and really if we were to extend this line here we'll call it k we actually have three transversals going through these two parallel lines, right? So if I wanted to also extend my parallel lines, that's kind of what it would look like, right? All right, 
So I know that's a lot, but let's take it one step at a time, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna label the diagram, right? So everything that they're giving us, we're gonna put it in there. So it says angle two measures 41 degrees, okay? So that's 41. It says angle five is 94, okay? 94 degrees. And angle 10 is 109 degrees. And then they're asking us to find all the other angle measurements. All right, so let's get started. So right off the bat, um, what we notice is the only one that we can find right off the bat is this angle four right here. And the reason we're able to find angle four is because if we put those together, what kind of angles do we have? We have an angle pair, right? So angle pairs, or sorry, linear pair. So linear pair, remember, adds a, it's supplementary. It's add up to 180, right? So 180 minus 94 gives us angle four measurement of 86 degrees, okay? And so one thing to remember, uh, so let's do this. So 86 degrees, that's kind of like on the top right corner, right? The only other top right corner angle that I have is up here. So those two should be corresponding. And because they're corresponding of parallel lines, then angle one is also 86 degrees, right? Do we have any other corresponding angles? We do. So angle 10 is kind of like on this bottom left corner, right? So angle seven is also kind of like on this bottom left corner. So that's also 109. And if we know that's 109, remember angle six and angle seven, when you put them together, it's a linear pair, right? So linear pairs, we should be thinking 180 so 180 minus 109 gives us an angle measurement of 71 degrees. Okay. And so now we, we got to figure out angles 8, 9, 2, and 3, right? And so notice how angle 5 with these two angles together should have been so, uh, corresponding, correct? But because this angle here is being split into two, not two equal parts, but just two two angles, right? So this whole thing, right, this whole thing right here is still supposed to be 94 degrees, correct? But because angle two is 41, then we simply subtract 41 from it, and we get a measurement of 53 degrees for angle three. Because now, if we were to put both of those two angles together, then they create angle 94, or angle five, right? And so we approach the same, uh, the same process for this top one here, right? So together, right, together, we know they should add up to 71 degrees, right? But because they are split, I wouldn't say we're stuck, but now we got to figure out what what's going on here, right? And so this is where the other transversal comes into play, okay? So notice how, I'm gonna circle these, I know it's getting messy. So the angle here that is, let me see if I can highlight it. So this angle here is being kind of created by this transversal K, right? And, and the parallel line. And so is this angle here, right? Parallel line and transversal. And so because they're the same, or because those are the two angles that are being connected by the transversal and is being kind of sandwiched in between the parallel lines and the transversal, that's telling me that these are gonna be alternate interior angles. And because the lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are gonna be congruent. And simply, now that I know that angle nine is 41 and I know the entire thing is supposed to be 71, I simply subtract it and I get angle eight to be 30 degrees. Okay. One other thing we can always check is, you remember a triangle, 
right? The angles of a triangle, so when you add them up, should equal 180 degrees, right? So one quick way we can check it, we can add 53 plus 86 plus 41, and we indeed get 180. And so if I were to check the ones in here as well, we got 41 plus 109 plus 30, and we also get 180. Okay. So quick little thing, we could have also checked, right? Um, and then if we were stuck to find angle nine, we knew angle three, we knew angle four, we can find nine, right? Because on a, on a triangle, if you know two out of the three, we simply subtract from 180. All right, so once again, uh, well, I don't tell you here, but line L is gonna be parallel to line M. And so if they're parallel, remember all the properties apply. So these are alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles means that they are gonna be congruent to each other. So if they're congruent to each other, we have 8x minus 77 equals 3x plus 38. And if we were to solve for x, right, so subtract 3x, that's 5. Add 77, that's 115. Divide by 5, and we get x to be 23. Okay. Again, there's not much to explain here. It's just we got to know our properties, right? All right, last one, so it says find the value of x and y. And once again, I forgot to tell you, but line L is parallel to line M, right? Another way I could have told you that they're parallel is I could have simply put two arrows there, or I could have simply put two little solid arrows. And so here we got a couple things, right? So this angle here, this angle here, and this angle there, right? So we can't really put these two together and say linear pair quite yet. I mean, we can, um, but the only thing is that we're, we're dealing with x's and y's, right? So we would have 8x minus 31 plus 5y plus 35 equals one, oops, 180, right? But again, we're dealing with x and y's. So we have to figure out what X is first. And I say X because I have another angle and that angle talks about X, right? And so the two angles are alternate because they're on the opposite sides of the transversals and they're on the interior, so alternate interior. And so remember, alternate interior angles are gonna be congruent. So we have 8X minus 31 equals 6X plus three, right? So a little algebra, subtract so 6X, so I get 2X. Add 31, so I got 34, yeah. Uh, divide by two, and we get x to be 17. Once I know what x is, right? So once I know what x is, I simply take it and substitute it in there. And I'm gonna solve for, uh, solve for y, right? So eight times 17 is 136 minus 30, well, I'm gonna go ahead and combine. So negative 31 plus 35 is plus four plus five y equals 180. So these two together is 140. Subtract it and we get 40 or y equals eight.